hey, this week I make a custom blaster from scratch. Let's go. Hey, how's it going? Anthony Fro here, Crate Sci-Fi. Well, today, a blaster? <laughs> we haven't done one of those in a week. <laughs> But you were all so kind. The last Blaster video I did, I, I sort of said, I think I'm doing too many. And everybody was like, no, no, we like them. So that inspired me. I've always wanted to make a custom Blaster. And here it is. It's 100%. I made it from scratch. No kit bashing. Did it in Tinkercad, which is a free program, which is like playing with blocks when you're a kid. I'll, I'll go over that very straightforward. You know, I always say on this channel, these are movie props, you know, not to be displayed. But this time, since it was my first custom blaster from scratch, I also went ahead and made a display stand, right? So that's something new. So that's kind of like uh, an afterthought that I did, but it, but it came out really cool. So 100% um, so custom blaster. So in this case, you know, if you have an OC original cosplay, or for display, or eventually I will use this in a movie, right? But if it's just like a display kind of thing, we got that covered in this episode. But yeah, it's something I've been wanting to do. I'm always making original designs and mashing stuff up, but never like from scratch, like totally mine. And I printed this in the resin printer, which is a very inexpensive printer, and I printed it solid, right? So this is a lot different than when I do like my filament printing, like, wow, this has weight. It's, it's, it's like a real object, but yeah, very excited to share this with you. I did, you know, spoiler alert. I did intend to do like chrome finish with gold letters. Didn't quite work out that way. <laughs> I'm not there yet, but I tried, right? So, but this is what I do and yeah oh it just feels so good all right so let's get into the building of this all right into tinkercad uh i really like this program like i said it's really basic so here i'm bringing in uh like i said i'm building this from scratch but this handle i brought in um was so that i could just start off with the right scale right so because it takes a long time to print you don't want to print something and then have it be wrong and have to go back and print so by doing this um, on, on the sort of looking at it and thinking, okay, this I know fits my hand. That way um, I'm off to the races, right? And then after I set up this initial size, then I can sort of start getting creative. Now, I know a lot of you are, are not crazy about the computer stuff, but uh, in the description below, I'll, I'll put a timestamp if you wanna jump ahead to just the um, the build and the assemble and the paint and all that. But, you know, I just wanted to show like how straightforward this is. It's like, I, all I'm doing is, you see there on the right in Tinkercad is I'm just grabbing shapes, right? And I'm just pulling them down. And, you know, there's no, I didn't take a course in this. I didn't make a plan. I'm all making this up as I go along. And I, I just really want to get across that especially with this super basic program, all I'm doing is grabbing shapes, pulling them in and skewing them, changing them. All this stuff that I'm doing right now, because it's recorded, it looks deliberate, right? It's like, okay, I'm, oh, I'm making this a triangle. I got the hole for the trigger. Let me put this here, but it's, I'm just, you know, this is sped up for the purposes of this video. But in real time, I'm just like, okay, I need a trigger need a circle. So then I take a circle and I'm like, okay, I'll hollow out the middle. Now I'm going to bury it in here. And this is going to look like a trigger, right? It's, that's really all it is, is just negative space and shapes. So here, um, I mean, I'll demonstrate here what I'm talking about. So there, you know, I'm starting to think, okay, I want it to be like a triangle, like pyramid shape barrel and you know i'm messing around and it's still not working for me and i'm thinking huh then i like chop it off and again that's not like a plan that's just like oh it'll look cool if i chop it off and then i'm like okay the, the base of it you know it needs to look a little more sturdy and like i said all these things are not 
step one, step two, step three, I'm just like, huh, what about this? That looks a little short. Let me stretch that out. Now, what's going to happen soon, I think, is, you know, so I, I, I have it in my head that I want the triangle barrel, right? And I'm like, something isn't right. And then I squish it down. And this is kind of the aha moment, right? And I'm like, oh, maybe it's this. And then I spin it around. And, you know, I'm just sharing this with you. It's like, for me, that was like, oh, that's it, right? No drawing, no plan, no tutorial, just taking squares and circles and triangles, smushing them and moving them around. And then it's like, I found from doing this a lot, same thing when you're building things physically, there's always that moment where you're like, oh, that's what it is. And it's just a matter of being open to that and knowing when to recognize that, right? So now I'm I'm in a place where I'm like, okay, this is working now. So now I'm not sort of experimenting. Now I'm building, right? So again, I just grabbed this, I guess it's octagon, like a stop sign shape. And I just pull it. There's no measurements there. There's no math. I'm just pulling things. And I, and I think what's helpful too, especially with the computer is, so I make these weird shapes, but there's also a tool where if I select everything, there's a tool that will center everything for you, right? So that's what kind of keeps it sort of balanced. Um, and really, you, you know, it just makes it easier. Now here, you know, I'm duplicating things. I'm, I'm testing things out. And here, all I'm doing is taking the shape that I like, I'm reducing the size of it, and now I'm gonna hollow it out, right? And then that gives me the barrel. And, you know, I don't wanna sound like a broken record here, but really, this is all I'm doing. I'm just grabbing shapes, putting them on there, and then uh, using the negative shapes to just sort of add details, right? And that detail, I'm doing air quotes right now, <laughs> detail is I'm just, cutting it at an angle and it, it, it makes it a little more interesting looking but that's all I'm doing right and you see me there like okay you know okay that box now is 200 millimeters not measuring that all I'm doing is just pulling stuff and thinking to myself oh that looks cool oh yeah that looks cool <laughs> and that's all it is you know what I mean I don't want to oversimplify it but it's like yeah that's that's what you got to do right so now I'm thinking Greeblies, right? And one of my favorite things about this is the Greeblies are 3D too, right? So there I found that knob and it's like, oh, that knob I can't rescale. So again, I'm demonstrating, I'm just grabbing stuff and pulling it in. So now I'm like, okay, let me get a shape that I'll be able to scale and make a different size. So, I mean, that shape, was it predetermined? Nope. I was like, I need a knob. I started looking at the available shapes. I was like, that looks like a knob to me. Then duplicate, make three, and then, I don't know if you see here, but right, so I grab it, and that was just the center tool right there. So now I know that they're they're centered. And that's it, right? I don't want to oversimplify it, but I also don't want to overcomplicate it. So now it looks kind of barren, so I'm like, oh, here's a trick that I know. So I go into a free font page, and I find a font, right? And a lot of people were asking me, what did it say on the side of the gun when I was sharing the progress on social media? So here I have this font that looks cool. I import it. And what does it say? Now you're going to see it. It just says create sci-fi. <laughs> but that font I thought was pretty cool. Now, if you look at it, now that you know that, I think here when I make it, I'm going to make it a little bigger here. It's like, boom, create sci-fi, right? So now I've showed this in other videos before. This is cool thing. So you save this as a JPEG and then there's an online converter. I'll leave a link to it and you just turn it into a vector. So that was it. Photoshop, I just typed some letters, made it a vector. And then now when you bring it into Tinkercad, it's going to bring it in as an object, which I mean, that's pretty cool. And again, I have this like text on there and it's customized, but as I've just demonstrated, was not really a, a crazy difficult thing to do, right? So now I wanna put it on the side, so now I have to massage it. And if you wanna just put like English text, there is a text tool 
already in in tinkercad i think it has like three or four different font um, options but and again not sponsored by tinkercad not pushing tinkercad this is just a free program you could go do this now you know as soon as you're done watching this video and it's pretty straightforward all i'm doing i'll say it again i'm just grabbing shapes and changing the shape of the shape <laughs> is that a real thing and then now i'm like oh yeah i kind of need some rails i think so just do that and it's all about you know adding the details these are essentially greeblies right and for me personally the trick is always when to back off, right? Because my tendency is to maybe just go a little too far. And I'm just kind of trying to check myself, right? I'm like, okay. But now, I don't know. I think this is going to happen soon. But I'm starting to think to myself, this is great. I love this. But now that I'm out of the, the frenzy of the excitement of building, I'm like, huh, this is never going to fit into my printer, right? So I need to consider... How am I going to print this? And the way you typically do that is you're going to have to cut it into sections. So I go on to Amazon and I find these really small uh, carbon fiber rods. They're only four millimeters. I think they're like 200 millimeters long. So they're perfect, right? So I take a hole and I make this negative space the exact size of the rod, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this through the center of the gun or not the center but like through the a, a, a middle part of the gun you see there i centered it but the it'll be up at the top in the barrel so that way when i slice it into i think i need to slice it into four pieces so i can print it on my machine then i'll have um keyholes right now, ideally, you would do it with biscuits and tabs and stuff, but, you know, uh, I'm not there yet, you know? So I just wanted to do, like I always do, like what's the, the best thing that I can do in the quickest thing? So there you see I have it cut into four sections, and then it has that hole running through it, and then that's where I'm going to put the graphite rod, right? Or, or, or the carbon fiber rod. So here, this is just in my Chitterbox printer. There's lots of different slicing software, but just... To just kind of show you like that's one of the pieces and i think it took me i think each print was nine hours so i think it probably took me like three days to print one usually fails so maybe four days and then you have to cure it with uv light and then now um you know uh, you just look at the fidelity on that oh man really loving the resin printer i mean look at that like you really i mean i do have to sand it still but it's like it's, it's just so cool. Like, look at that. Oh, man, so happy with it. This is the first large object I've resin printed, right? So now we get into familiar territory. Now we're going to turn this into a custom blaster back in the workshop. <laughs> All right, so now I have uh, those are the, the carbon fiber rods. And you'll see there's going to be an adjustment with those. Spoiler alert. And I got my pieces. So the first thing is, you know, everything's a learning sort of a process. Is that, so one end of those prints is a little like, I don't want to say dog-eared, but they're, it's a little soft. So I'm going to have to even those up. And then also too, you got to wear safety goggles for what I'm about to do, is that the holes are not quite wide enough because you know i i made the mistake and i and i really have to learn to do this better is i made them the exact same size and you have to do what's called allowances and i just got to get better than that right so here i just have my my poor man's table sander and you see i stopped there abruptly i was like oh this is dust is not good <laughs> so now i have my goggles and a respirator and all i'm doing there is i just want to make the surfaces flat so that they butt together so what happened is when they print and they hang hung down one side of them got just like a little f curved right just slightly but enough where if i'm trying to make these uh fit together seamlessly that was not happening right so now i have a i don't know why i have that air i think it was just left over from a computer thing 
So now I have this rod and, you know, this was my plan and it was a good plan. But here I'm like, oh, it's just a little too snug. So let me drill out the holes. No big deal. That should have worked fine. But what happened was because, you know, you're able to be so precise is the holes are just a little too close to the end. And what happened there is when I drilled, it cracked through. Now, luckily, that's going to be covered up by the trigger. But now I'm like new plan. So I have a wooden doll, which is uh, imperial. So it was just a little bit smaller uh, than the, the metric, um, you know, fiber rod that I had. So for this, you know, really all I need that stick for is that dowel for is to key everything to line it up. So here, just to kind of do some insurance, I'm gonna um, paint it with super glue and that's just gonna make it firmer. Like I was, you know, the, the carbon fiber rod, that just sounds cool and it would have been cool, but you know, you gotta improvise, right? So now next time I know I have to be better with my allowances and make the holes you know, slightly larger, not, you know, I'm making everything exact and I got to get better at, um, you know, it's like anything else with practice. You're like, oh, I know that I need to make this, you know, half a millimeter or whatever. So here, this is working as planned, right? So all I'm doing is using that hole to key it. I got the super glue, just gives me a second and then you know, those are all flat now because we sanded them. So it's all going together really nicely. So then here, again, you know, everything, even no matter how hard you try, <laughs> there's always a hiccup, right? So for some reason that wasn't lining up. So what I did was I had to cut off the end there and then I just um, super glued that. Now, typically I wouldn't just rely on super glue, but I'm going to be uh, using some resin as well. So, you know, we got to fill up um, the creases there, right? We got to fill up the, the negative space. So I'm going to use resin when I get to that. So that's why I was okay with the super glue. So now I have, again, I have keyed, I have this handle. And again, I made the, the positive and the negative. And I had the same issue here where I made them exactly the same size and you have to make allowances because you know the 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 map is not the terrain right even though you do something perfect and virtual once you get in the real world it, it there's variances right so just broken record but i'm saying this probably more for me than to you <laughs> i have to get better at that but now i finally you know obviously this is sped up for entertainment purposes, but that probably took me about 20 minutes to sort out. So not horribly crazy, but still it would have been nice if it just fit together, you know, the way you designed it, but adapting, moving on, right? So now this is coming together and wow, you know what I mean? It's just, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, it, it really is a moment for me, like sort of like feels like a climbing, like another rung in the ladder where this feels like, you know, I'm kind of doing the same things I do on the channel, gluing the stuff together, sanding, whatever. But for me personally, having designed this, the way it feels, the way it looks, it's definitely an evolution for me. I'd say, you know, one rung on the ladder, not like a huge leap, but you know, much better and, and forward movement, which is cool. So now 220 sanding. Now, if, if I had a larger scale printer or those keys worked better, you know, the way that the resin printer works, it's, it's like, you don't really need to do a lot of sanding. Like if you had something that designed that you designed that you could print in one piece, you'd be in really good shape. So now, uh, like I said, I got the five minute epoxy. And um, what I did is I, instead of doing Bondo, is I used the five minute epoxy to, um, to sort of bring everything together, right? And then also I put it on a little heavy so that I can hide the seams because once I sand it off, then I'm gonna be able to um, correct those seams. So there, just wanna show you like how how much is on there, right? So it's like, it's very thick, but that's on purpose because I have these flat surfaces and I just want to get rid of um, these seams. 
Now you hope it's one and done, but you know, as you'll see, it's a process. And again, this I've never done before. Uh, probably would have been better off doing it with Bondo, but you know, I wanted to try this and I'm still gonna have to mess around with those letters because um, some glue is in there. And you know, it's all very tactile, light, you know, people are like, well, you know, sometimes they're not so crazy about having printed things, but it's like, it's still, you still got to work it, man. It's still tech, you know, testing it in the light, sanding, getting it just right. You know, it's, it's still, it's, it's not like a, a print it and you're done. It's far from that. So anybody who complains about like, oh, you're just printing it out. They've, they've never laid hands on a print <laughs> and tried to bring it to life. <laughs> Nothing's easy. So here you'll notice I'm using a lot of blocks and electric sanders because a lot of these uh, planes are flat and long. So, you know, using a, a sanding block really helps with that. So now, you know, my poor man's air gun, it's still... Now I'm starting to tell like, okay, it's going to, it's going to take a few steps to get this right. And I'm starting to realize it's not going to be pristine. Like I was hoping that I'd be able to get it pristine. I just had it in my head, you know, because I'm always doing like beat up kind of, you know, world worn props. I was thinking with this design, I might be able to get away with sort of making it like ethereal, right? Like otherworldly but got to go with it. And um, you'll see what I mean later on. So here I'm thinking, okay, well, we're close, but l let me hit the, so hitting it with a primer, even though that piece is gray and I'm hitting it with gray primer, once you have the primer on there, you know, you can tilt it in the light and you'll see there, like then you're like, okay, these are the problem spots. So the epoxy was the stage one. Again, if, if you were doing this following me, I would say do Bondo, not the epoxy like I did. But, you know, I gave it a shot. I could have been like, oh, this is the answer I was looking for. It was not. <laughs> so here I'm just taking a pencil and I'm filling up the problem areas. So now here I have like a plastic wood filler. Uh, I like to get the one that's plastic, right? So I think if I was doing woodwork, <laughs> I think this would be a terrible solution. I would want like a, a, a filler with wood in it, but this, because I'm using it for plastic, is sort of like, this is not what it's intended for, but it, it works good. So I'm thinking it's probably gonna be two more steps. Well, I mean, I know it is, <laughs> but at the time I'm thinking, okay, so I'm gonna fill up the egregious sort of, you know, bigger voids and and, and problems with the, with the putty, sand that, and then I'll probably do a final like bot putty pass, right? So here's the 220. And here I am just um, trying to even it all out, right? You're just trying to not make it look like it's four pieces. And then, you know, in the process of building and printing, there is going to be um, sort of, uh, you know, something's going to be wrong or have a slight imperfection. Like in this case, the one side with the letters didn't go together perfectly, but, you know, it's 1% of the piece, so you you manage it and you figure it out, right? So now, hair dryer, sanding. Now I'm getting more into the sanding sticks because it's like in between the letters. And again, you know, as I'm doing this, I'm like, huh. I think the only way to get something pristine would be like if I printed it in a large format printer and I was able to print the whole thing as like pretty much one piece, right? But moving on, again, multitasking, thinking, all right, well, I still gonna make this happen. More sanding, and as you, you'll notice, you, you sand most everything off, but what you want is it for it, it just to lay down in those low spots, and then you hit it with, with the sandpaper, get the high spots, and I'm like, am I priming? Yep, so another coat of primer. And then there, now it's closer, but it's still, you know, that's what's good about the primer is you can't hide and there's little divots and little things. So now I'm just gonna use the air drying spot putty, which is typically what I use when I do uh, filling with Bondo. And this is, you can't use this for deep 
voids or cracks. This is just for like pinholes and like little tiny seams like we have here. I used to always, you know, you, you use like a spatula tool to put this on, but at some point I just abandoned that and just started using my finger because I oddly feel like I had more control. And you know, it's so common now to have the, the rubber gloves. It's like, yeah, why not, you know? So here I'm just, final answer. And again, every time I look at it and I'm about to stop, it's like, oh, there's another spot, you know? So it's like, I don't think it's ever finished. It's just more like abandoned. So that had time to dry. So now I have some 400 grit going up in the grits because we're getting closer. And then this, um, you, you typically sand off like most of it, right? Right, because you see there, it's only like in the spots, like pinholes or, or like, a, like a little part of the seam that's still a void. And it's just like the touch up. And yeah, that looks good. So now I'm just gonna hit it with the Scotch-Brite. Scotch-Brite, steel wool, that's always like my final pass. I feel like, you know, because that conforms to whatever the shape is of the object, that's sort of like the last sort of thing to make sure that you got everything. And again, right when you're about to stop, it's like, oh, there's a spot there, there's a spot there. It's never ending. <laughs> so that I think is good. I got this can of air that I used for this project. It's about to run out. And then now we're gonna hit it with another coat of primer. And then I'm gonna hit it with the base chrome, which I thought, you know, spoiler alert, I thought it was gonna be this chrome and then just go letters, but it didn't quite go that way, but that's fine. Like I said, you know, it would have to be one piece. So here, again, you know, plans change. So here I have this gold rub and buff and my plan in my head was I'm gonna have this chrome blaster and I'm just gonna gold plate the letters and just that like sort of like streak detail, you know, and then the letters on the hand grip. But this gold, it doesn't really pop the way I, I imagined it would. And you'll see in a second, I'm gonna switch to a different gold, right? It's like, you're always like trying different things. So this is like a richer gold. And now I'm like, let me try it with my bare fingers. <laughs> Right. And I guess what I'm trying to illustrate here is that, you know, none of this is like, oh, I'm an expert at this. It's all like, huh, what works? So here I have a, a lid to a pot of mine that I use to dye stuff. And I want to create like uh, now that I know that I'm going to go for a weather gun, not pristine, you know, whatever, whatever, anything that's like steel or chrome colored, you know, you're shooting blasts out of the nose of this. So it's going to be heat damaged. So I have like some reference images of heat damage uh, that I just looked on my phone. And I'm just trying to copy that here to sort of get that started. And again, when I start making decisions like this, it's kind of like, you know, I like I said, I had it in my head, it's pristine chrome and gold, that wasn't working. So as soon as I spray painted on this heat damage, it's kind of like, okay, forget about that. We're moving on, right? <laughs> it's like, looks like I put a knife in it. All right, so now I'm gonna hit this all with a clear. And then now it's sort of like, okay, at one point this thing was chrome and beautiful, but that the story we're telling is that was a very long time ago. This thing is maybe passed down a few generations. Maybe it was lost and some adventurer, some hero found it and resurrected it because it's some magical weapon and it was like lost you know underwater for, i don't know so now i'm doing um i'm doing a, a a black wash a sludge wash with the uh with the spirit based wash because i want to give the whole thing like a patina right so it was it was you know it was shiny chrome once but now it's definitely aged and in that aging it um, it now has sort of this mist over it. So now I'm doing the, the rust color. And this, 
same thing. Just I, I don't wet this down. I because I want it to be more of like a almost like a sepia tone. But you got to be careful because if you wipe it, then you're going to end up just painting the whole thing, right? So you have to dab it, and you have to be careful not to overdo it. And then here, you know, like I said, just from experience. All these colors are mostly wiped off, but I find that this is more like a camera thing where, you know, if you have these little flecks of purple, red, and the colors, again, they're not, I don't think of them. I just look up at my shelf and I'm like, oh, I have some purple, I have some red. And I think, I'm not sure, but I think what happens is the camera sensor knows that it's something different there and, and it just kind of brings it to life right you can you can challenge that in the comments and i i couldn't come back <laughs> and say you're wrong because i i just think that i could be totally wrong but something's going on right and then you know i'm just sort of piece by piece and clear so not only is this the sanding channel but it is the clear finish <laughs> spray channel <laughs> So now for finishing touch, I want to just on the handle there, I want to spray some Plasti Dip. Now, it's just a little thing. It's hardly there. It's like you would argue why even do that, but it really is going to add a lot of value. Um, I've done a lot of blaster videos in a row now, so you'll, you'll recognize me saying that the value I find is because it's tactile for the performer when they're putting it in their hands, but it's also um, filmically, it, it will reflect or deflect the light differently than the other paint. And to me, that that's uh, a very valuable and cool asset. So now, you know, I've learned the hard way and I always share this with you that when you're Painting the smallest little detail, it's you have to go through the trouble to mask off the whole piece. You just you just have to. Because if you don't, it, you'll have to start all over and it's just it's just one of those things. So now I'm gonna hit this with some plastic dip. And again, it's like, you know, the devil's in the details, right? So it's little tiny thing that we did, but it's just when it's done, you're glad you did it, right? And then also too, you know, the process dictates a lot of the outcome too, like things you didn't intend. Cause you're gonna see here what's gonna happen is as I demask this, I like to use the, these, these special, uh, I think they're to me, uh, uh, masking tapes cause they're really good. But for some reason, I usually, I think because I was moving fast on this, like I didn't let it dry for 48 hours, I, I pulled off some of the paint with the tape, right? So again, because, you know, if, if I was doing pristine, I would have had to start all over, but because now that we've committed to making this thing weathered, so now what I got to do is um, treat this as a happy accident, right? So I have this paint that peeled off in this area, so now I got to lean into it right so now i'm backtracking doing a lot of the previous steps to try to blend it together but then also you know you're gonna have to make it its own thing right so now i'm like okay this is like a real so maybe you know this whole thing was buried for a hundred years and this little piece of it this little corner this is what was sticking out in the sun and the sand right and this this just got a little more beat up i don't know um and it, I, also what i find too is like right now i'm dealing with this right we're looking at this and it's like huh go back and forth put some on pull some off oh god did i ruin the whole thing oh let me add some more silver oh no but what I found is just, you know, just relax, man. Because <laughs> what's going to happen is like, I don't know, yesterday I was putting this away in my house and I didn't even look at that. Like it didn't even, you know what I mean? It's like, it's fine. It's fine. It's all good. Right. But here I'm hitting it with a little bit of clear. 
But also by the same token, you don't just say the heck with it. It's you still, you know, put all, all your effort and give it your best. But, you know, it is what it is. And like I said, I was putting this away yesterday and I didn't even think about that. I didn't look at it. It didn't even cross my mind. So I think it's good. So now that handle, I mean, maybe it's just me. Tell me in the comments. But it's like, I think that looks just so much better just with that little handle detail, right? And then there, a little close up of all that's going on. So now just on the handle, because I painted that after I did the weathering, I'm just putting a, a little bit of pigment powder on there because, you know, that's fresh paint and you don't want it to look like, um, you know, we rescued this 200 year old artifact weapon and put a new handle on it and that was it <laughs> so now it's all blended together and yeah you see what i mean it's just like that little thing so then now i never do this but i was like you know what let me make a stand for this since it is my first original design and i i want to display it so that size is totally dictated on what i could print this one i printed in my old printer not the resin printer um and then now Again, I got close with the allowances this time. It, you know, I wanted it to be a press fit. So now I'm just sanding everything so that, it, that it'll fit better. But I just had to just massage these sides a little. So, you know, what I said earlier is I got to get better at press fitting. Um, the, the tolerances, the allowances here, you know, with that little bit of sanding, I got it. So that was better, still not there yet, but you know, day by day. So there I have the stand. And now uh, I'm, I'm just gonna put some um, EVA foam on it so that it just has like a little bit of support that's not gonna scratch it up. And also, if I'm being honest, it was just a little too tight. Um, how far it was from the bottom when it's resting in the cradle. So by doing this, I'm gonna give myself probably like an extra four millimeters and it'll be fine. And it, you know, again, you know, you go with it. So it looks like, oh no, I designed this to have these super special cushions for the thing. No, I didn't. I designed it a little too small. So these, <laughs> these make up for it, but you know, you proceed as though, oh yes, that's absolutely what I meant to do, right? So now I'm just testing it out and I'm like, yeah, that's gonna work, right? So these uh, you hit with the heat. So that's not a hairdryer, that's the heat gun. And what that does is it just gets rid of the fuzzies and it seals the foam so that we can paint it. And uh, we're gonna paint it with some plaster dip because this is what the plaster dip is really good for is for foam. Um, that using it on handles is just something I adapted from having the plastic dip around for my phone projects, right? So you never know, grab something off the shelf, give it a shot. So here I'm just gluing this together. Not too worried about the bottom because I'm gonna put some foam, like a foam pad at the bottom, like a foot. So I'm gonna hit this with some two-in-one filler because it's the, you know, it's the filament printer. And then I'm using textured paint because this is just a stand. I'm, I'm over sanding. I don't want to sand anything. <laughs> so the filler primer fills up the lines. That textured paint makes it less important that, um, that it has some texture to it, right? So here's that. And now that you know those are initials, so those the letters on there are A-R-F. So Anthony R. Ferraro. So guess my middle name in the comments <laughs> starts with an R <laughs> right so here um, doing what we just did with the gun right so you're watching it again but um, you know this demonstrates that well in this case actually this is just water and black acrylic paint right so if you got some acrylic paint from the hobby shop for a couple bucks that's exactly what this is right but I don't know it's going to be on display so you want to make a nice clear whoa clear paint <laughs> didn't see that coming but this i'm all doing in one day right so this i'm using the hair dryer 
like I said, it's it's just a stand. I, I, I'm, I'm over it, but I still want to make it nice. So here I have some foam. I'm going to put this at the bottom. And, you know, it's just a stand, but it's weird, like these details. So the 3M77, I like to use for, for this. It's going to um, give that a base. So that glue is drying off camera while I'm putting these um, nubbins on, whatever you want to call them and uh that should be tacky by the time i get done doing this so here's the the test fit i'm like okay that works bing boom boom and then now let's put this on the foam yeah that 77 stuff is good and again this i don't know it just cleans it up like putting a frame on a picture it makes it nice makes it all nice and yeah, look at that. Never say never, right? What do I always say on this channel? These are film props, not for display. And here I am making a display. Who knew? Didn't see that coming. So I got the display. What's that middle R? That's my middle name. Yeah, that looks good. So let's do some beauty shots. And there it is. And I like that the letters still pop, even though I didn't make a pristine chrome. I'm happy with that see all those different colors like when you're looking at it in real life you don't see those colors the way you see them on camera nice profile i like that little glyph on the handle there and there it is in its stand yeah pretty cool we get stand and all <laughs> very cool i love the profile i love how it is sort of incorporating things that i've done but it's uniquely mine i don't feel like it looks like anything i've seen before you know we made the stand so very happy with that and like i said mostly that it's you know original like i feel like you know it, it might invoke something for you but i don't feel like i've seen anything like that before like the the profile and you know it's anybody could do this like the profile that this has you know how it's sort of got this sort of flat thing that's just because I took the object available in Tinkercad and I smushed it down and sliced this off like nothing, you know, don't need a college degree for that. So I guess the only thing left to do is to fire it up. <laughs> now I do know how this one turns on because, you know, I built it. Let's move you back a little for this. All right. You there? All right. So... So these knobs, that turns it on. Turns it on. Okay, there it is. Um, let's not obliterate. Let's just make it stun. And high bolts. All right, here we go. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> let's do one more. Oh, nice. Well, as always, I hope you found this video useful. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. Love to read the comments and check out the merch shop. We got the hats. This is my favorite, the black on black, but all sorts of different colors and hats and bags and all sorts of stuff that you could want to show your support of Crate Sci-Fi. Like I said, that stuff really helps the channel helps me to make these videos you know it's there don't feel pressure but you know subscribe buy merch <laughs> you know the drill <laughs> but as always remember i'm just here to help make sci-fi 